Yeah, great to see everyone. Um, first off, I'd like to uh, send a couple of congratulations out to the folks in our department. Uh, Terry Morton and her girls, what a, what a phenomenal run they had. Um, really fun team to watch. I love their intensity and their, and their, and their, their defense. Um, but to, to take their team to, know, to, to where no one's been before in the women's program, I think says a lot. And I think it's a lot about our department um, and where we're headed in particular with a lot of our women's sports. Um, and Terry's a, she's a fantastic peer in our department and uh, one that, that I rely on often for, uh, for good conversation. So I want to congratulate them. And then obviously there's been um, a lot of excitement around men's basketball with, uh, with Mike Woodson's uh, um, announcement and the staff that they're putting together. Um, I've been, a have been going to games since, um, since Mike Woodson was playing um, just starting to go to games at that point. And, uh, you know, that, those first uh, teams that I remember watching um, are, were some of my, my fondest memories as a kid. And he obviously has gone on to do a great job in his career in coaching. And I think he'll bring a lot of um, wonderful expertise and a, a, a new perspective to IU basketball. And, and yet, has the DNA running through his veins, similar to what we have here with soccer, with our staff. So I'm um, really excited. And then lastly, um, you know, I uh, can't say enough about our women's program. Um, you know, we're in this final stretch here and they've won the most conference games. I think they've won in a long time. I don't know exactly, um, but I work with them up here in our, in the tardy and they're a great group and the girls are, um, we're doing a great job, really fun to watch. And they're not just scooting by teams, they're, they're winning games and playing well. So Erwin and his staff, great job. Um, and then <clears throat> I wish to say lastly, um, on unfortunate news is the Spencer Glass um, update that many of you may not know. He has broken his leg um, in the game against uh, Michigan. So he will be out the rest of the season he uh, had his procedure done uh, on Sunday. The medical staff was did a great job in, in getting him, uh, getting the bone um, put back together, if you will. And he'll, uh, his spirits are really high for all things considered. Um, and we are certainly hope to, to raise a, a trophy for him on Sunday, um, along with for our other seniors that have been uh, a part of a, a lot of good years here since they've been here at IU. So with that, I'll turn it over to you guys. Uh, Jared Kelly. Hey, Todd. Uh, I wanted to ask him about Roman. Uh, he's been having a terrific year. I think that's uh, three uh, Big Ten Defensive Player of the Week awards. I think he's only conceded two goals this year as well. Um, just uh, when you first recruited him to IU, did you think that he would come along this quickly? Um, obviously, he had a lot of time last year to develop, but did you did you think he would uh, be this good uh, this quickly? Uh, to answer your question, no. Um, we, we, we saw a lot of potential in Roman, and – you know, he was a late bloomer and we typically like to find those in, in, in goalkeepers in particular, but he was, you know, Roman didn't even take over starting his, his, his club goalkeeping starting job until really uh, late junior year. He had an all um, a youth international for us that played in front of him. We watched that team closely because I had Josh Penn on it and some others. And uh, we saw a kid that had a lot of promise and then you get to know him He's is a hardworking, humble, just everything that we're looking for were for character. Um, but once he got here, that wasn't a huge surprise. So I guess two parts. Once we started working with him, I'm not surprised he made the jump that he's made. But in the recruiting process, we thought it might take a while. So we clearly don't always get it right. And uh, that was a pleasant surprise because he's been he's been wonderful since the day he arrived. Jeremy Price. Yeah, Todd, I just kind of wanted to go back to Spencer a little bit. And, and obviously, there's, there's never a good time for something like that to happen. But I guess uh, the fact you guys had a, the middle buy this week gives you a little more time to kind of work through your options and things like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, losing a, you know, one of your top players and at times, certainly uh, the most experienced player or one of the most experienced with AJ of our older players with minutes played. Yeah, it's tough. Um, and, you know, we're not quite sure what we're going to do yet. Quite honestly, we've had some other injuries in the back line and um, we, we don't know what we're going to do, but we'll figure it out. You saw in the last game, we had 
Balloon Gumbali at right back for a segment has never played in a minute in training, let alone the game. <laughs> and then uh, we have to move Brett Beebe, the Swiss Army knife that he is, to another new position to finish the game. So um, we're going to definitely miss Spencer. The his his positive mentality, you know, Spencer is the proverbial never super high, but never super low. He he is steady, and you know, and you see him, you know, at practice. You know, he's on the golf cart. Um, and he came up to the video session today, just, his smile on his face, and he just wants to see us do well. He wants to see the work that he's put in finish. He wants to see it finished. And, you know, that's the job of this group is to finish the work that Spencer and the guys before him did. And we uh, will do everything we can to, to do, do that. That's the best way to honor a teammate that's injured. Um, but in re response to Jeremy, what we're doing yet, I'm not sure. Evan. Yeah, Todd. Um, obviously, Sunday's the last game of the season playing Maryland. Uh, you also obviously have a chance to win the Big Ten tournament or Big Ten uh, regular season title, depending on how you play. Is that something that weighs on your mind or the players' minds? Are they going through practice this week? No, I, I love the fact that we have, you know, an opportunity to to feel a tournament, you know, pressure before it's truly a, you know, and, you know, don't get a result and go home. Um, you know, this, this will impact our title opportunity. It'll impact a seed. We're either a one or a two. Um, that's not a huge impact on the big 10 tournament. That means you would, if seeds hold true, you would travel for the final. Um, at that point, you got to win on the road anyhow. So, um, I mean, I'm, I'm excited that we would have the opportunity to, to, to have that. And, you know, a, a, a win or a draw would give us the title, which, you know, allowing allowing us to know a draw would 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 allow, allow us. We don't, you know, approach the game differently than having to win. However, in the overtime, if we were there, you certainly would have a different approach, knowing that a, a tie could could get you the title. So, we'll we'll, we'll game plan accordingly. And um, but yeah, I mean, Maryland's a really good side. They they're um, they're really thin right now. They're beat up. Um, so uh, you know, and watching the game of the day, they only went a couple deep. So I'm not quite sure, you know, how they're doing physically, but uh, they're they're a good side and they have everything to play for. Maryland is trying to obviously uh, bolster their resume after starting on 0 three, which was uncharacteristic for them. So uh, they have a lot to play for. We have a lot to play for. So that makes you know some of these these last games there might already be seeds already sorted out, and you do, you, you know in this case no, there's a lot to play for, which is which you need when a short season. There's not a lot of games we've had, so. We need every chance we can to play these types of games. Steve. Yeah. Hey coach. Hi. Um, so, you know, the goal differential has been pretty amazing this year and, you know, there was the tough half with Ohio state and it felt like we saw that again last week in the first half with Michigan, we've mm -hmm. got tournament coming up. You can't really afford a, a bad half. It was it effort. Was there something else that you saw and how are you going to address that heading into a tournament play? Yeah, I think that, you know, the bad start to Ohio State was, it, it was movement. It was, we just seemed like we were still you know, proverbially on the bus um, or just got off the bus, which we kind of did. Um, the Michigan first half was more to Michigan's credit, quite honestly. We, you know, we were off, uh, but they, 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 they caused that a lot. And then we, we didn't settle in. So um, that happens when you play good teams. Um, certainly you don't want to see it for a long period. We, we did kind of get it back a little bit late in the half. And there were segments even in the half looking back that we, we were, we were fine. Um, and then the second half, you know, really turned and, and even the game out, but yeah, you, you know, we, yeah, we have, of course, 30 minutes of a game against a team that, you know, is it maybe a little bit more goal dangerous? Um, Michigan really is good at keeping the ball. They, they don't go to goal as aggressively as they've had. But if a team was able to do both, then, you know, we might have been in a hole 1-0 down and crawling back. But I told the guys at halftime, like, hey, you really can't play much, much worse. I don't think they can play any better. Um, I'm, I'm actually pretty excited about the second half and kind of played that way and came down to a, a big moment, big play and um, good game. I mean, that's the Michigan's a quality side. Jeremy Price. I just kind of went, you went back in uh, a minute ago and said, you know, Maryland for their resume obviously needs to work on some things. How do you kind of view this as we get to the end of such an abbreviated season going into the tournament 
first for you guys, just, you know, if you stub your toe or whatever, how that might affect you. And then just overall, do you have any kind of sense for how they're going to evaluate teams and resumes in a season that's so compacted? It's hard. I mean, the, the best that I can understand is they're, they're going to, you know, they're going to evaluate the RPI is really not a measure this year that can be really taken with much weight because the, there's no crossovers um, and the amount of games impact your RPI. So I think it's going to be, you know, what's traditionally the big 10 had in the tournament and then look at that, whatever that number is, is it three or four and then evaluate as the committee would have to, okay, let's look at those teams Is team four, are they 500 because the, 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 it was a muddy Big Ten season. Well, maybe they get three and the Pac-12 gets another one or something. So I feel like if you're in the top one or two in the Big Ten to finish the regular season, you're in a good position um, for NCAA play, regardless of how the conference tournament plays out. Um, but we don't know. Um, to Getting back to it, Jeremy, the committee – you know, has to have a, a tough task. There's there's not a lot of at larges, um, but I do know that our goal different our numbers are really strong, and that makes me you know have a lot of confidence that we're in a good position um, heading into this final stretch with regards to NCAA. This is I mean we're in the top ten in about every category, defensively and offensively, and you look at that and you're like okay. Um, that's it. whether we didn't play well in certain halves it, it, at that point, the, the proof is in the results and you, you got to reward those teams. So I think our body of work is, is one that will be rewarded. Um, whatever that, I don't know what that means in seeding and how the heck they're even going to do that. I don't even know the tournament format. You tell me how to do 36 teams, eight teams play first. I, I don't know. <laughs> um, they, they haven't really even talked to us about it. And I haven't even thought about the tournament really until the Michigan win. I'm like, okay, we're in a good spot. You know, we still need to move forward. Before then, I, did, I didn't even – honestly, I wasn't thinking about it because I need, I knew we needed a few more big wins and finish on the, in the top spot in the, in the Big Ten. Evan? Yeah, you talked about this a little bit, but I want to kind of circle back to uh, Maryland, you know, kind of underperforming this year, um, especially at the beginning of that season with the under three start. But what have you seen, you know, watching film, and how are you preparing for them come Sunday? Well, part of Maryland's, uh, you know, underperforming was a result, too, of some of the, you know, they lost some key players like we did. I mean, they lost the DeRosas right before the season. They had a couple injuries. So it, it was like anything. They're trying to figure out a team with no exhibitions that we didn't, none of us had. And, it, it, and I didn't see, like, the whole game of the first three games. I saw s- segments. They have a, Sasha's a good coach and they're a good program. They've, they've, they've given time to these young players or, or older players that haven't had big roles, just like we have. I mean, some of the, some of the key performances have been, you know, red shirt sophomores at Wittenbrink, uh, Ben's an example, others that just needed time to get comfortable and they're performing better. Maryland's the same. So they're legitimately in the top, you know, two or three in our conference, no doubt. And the results are starting to go their way. Um, so yeah, they figured it out, but they're, they're, like I said, they're, they're, they're definitely missing players like we all are. And that affected them maybe a little bit more than us at the beginning of the year with results. 